Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my SDL3 programming series. In today's episode, we are going to move on to hardware accelerated rendering. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into this lesson. Now, what we've been working on previously in our SDL application, just to give you a little refresh here, is again, setting up our application. And last time we were working primarily with surfaces. So again, a surface is just a collection of pixels and we were blitting or copying some surface found in this test.bmp image onto our window here. So if I go ahead and scroll through our code, just to give you a little reminder of that here, we separated out our application. We have this render function here and we grab the surface or whatever the pointer is associated with the window that we've created and we blit or copy in those test pixels from the test BMP image every time and then update the surface. So again, if we just keep changing the pixels that we're blitting or copying into our window and updating them over time again and again and again, every frame of our game, that gives an update here. So again, I'll just go ahead and run that here so you can see what we had from the last lesson. And again, this works pretty well. It seems to be running at 60 frames per second based off of our frames per second computation. But again, we can do better. This is using all the software render. Now software rendering is still important, especially for things like portability. And there are again, use cases in mixing software rendering and hardware accelerated rendering, which you might learn about later on in your graphics career. But with that said, let's go ahead and make our application now hardware accelerated. So we're going to talk about a few different functions here. Let's go ahead and explore in the SDL uh, documentation here. And if I looked at the API by category today, we want to again look at 2D accelerated rendering. So let's go ahead and have a click there. And again, basically, this is going to be using the built in 2D rendering API. Now we're going to be talking a lot about this in this series. So stay tuned for more videos coming up. But basically, again, this API gives us our basic things we can do drawing points, lines, rectangles and textures. And we can also draw various polygonal shapes as well. So if you want to draw a pentagon or something, you can do that. And there's APIs for doing more complex things. Now, this is the built in support from SDL for doing rendering. So in the back end of the engine, it might be using something like OpenGL, Vulkan, Metal, etc. Uh, in fact, we'll even query what API we're using, whether it's OpenGL or Direct3D. Uh, I'm on a Linux machine, so most likely OpenGL here. But basically, the purpose of this API, again, is to help us do hardware acceleration for a lot of simple 2D operations, namely pasting a texture on the screen with you know some texture or texel data pixels that we care about for our characters. And this is enough to make a complex game in complete 2D or you can even fake uh, 3D perspective with this. So again, uh, there are is more to SDL. We'll talk about the SDL3 GPU API later on. But again, we just want to focus with these uh, basic 2D rendering API here in SDL. So how do we do this? Well, first and foremost, what we're going to need to do is create a render. Now we can do this uh, in one step. There is a SDL create window and renderer function if you prefer. I'm gonna do it in two explicit steps just for showcasing how this is done. Um, again, there might be you know various reasons you wanna separate out this step here. But basically what we're gonna need to do is create a SDL renderer here and we just call it M renderer. So this will be part of our, again, application. And we are allowed to have multiple instances of a render. That's fine. But uh, let's just go ahead and start with one here. So again, as far as the function goes here, SDL create render, we'll pass in the window that's going to be hardware accelerated. And then we can create a specific type of uh, renderer that is supported on our hardware. So again, this could be something like OpenGL or Direct3D and so on. I'm just going to pass in null here so that SDL chooses whatever it thinks is the best. Um, again, this could be something, you know, to make your application more portable. Again, though, you might want to allow your users to explicitly choose for whatever reason here. So anyways, let's just go ahead and create a render first and foremost. Uh, and then we'll also explore some of the renderers that were available here. But I'm going to do this in my constructor or somewhere after I've initialized SDL and somewhere after I have created my window. So let's go ahead and do this here and render equals and then we'll create our uh, SDL render and we're going to call this function. We're going to take in our window and for the name, as mentioned, I'm just going to pass in a uh, null pointer Okay, for C++. All right, so now that I've got this uh, render created, again, we can do a little bit of error checking. 
we could say something like if uh, m render equals null pointer, then we should do maybe an assertion and exit our application. Uh, not able to create hardware accelerated render. Okay, for whatever reason here. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and compile that. Uh, oops, not m rendering, m render. There we are. So, so far, so good. Okay, so now let's actually use this render here and refactor our application just a little bit. I mean, we've got this surface here. I'm going to just comment this out uh, for now because we're not going to really use our surface uh, at this point here. And then if I scroll down here, let's go ahead and scroll into our render function. This is what we're going to want to update here. Uh, I'm no longer going to need to grab the window surface. Okay, let me go ahead and just show you what I've got here in my renderer. So there's basically nothing here now. Uh, but instead, the function that I'm interested in uh, is going to be to clear my render so that I have some sort of background color. Uh, I could set the color just to make something a little bit more interactive. And then ultimately what I'm going to do here is present the updated pixels. So in a similar way, we were doing that before we were updating the window surface, we we're going to use SDL renderer present. So let me show you in the documentation, these few functions. So we're going to be using SDL uh, and let's look at our functions. Again, they're all going to start with SDL render uh, or renderer here <laughs> of some sort. So you could just search those clear. Uh, so first let's go ahead and just clear our renderer. So that's going to sort of give us this blank screen here. So let's go ahead and do this. SDL render clear. And you'll kind of get an idea of the API here. It's probably going to take in the render. Okay. So and again, I'll return true or false here. And it clears the entire rendering target. Okay. And renderer. And as I mentioned, we can have multiple rendering targets. So we could render to just a portion of our screen, or if you're doing split screen rendering or had a different window or something, uh, again, that's why you would need to uh, sort of specify what this is here. And in order to set the pixels that we're going to fill, I need to set the uh, render draw color. Okay, so there's a specific function for that. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can find it here. Render draw color. Uh, and the reason why I'm searching for it instead of just clicking on that link is sometimes you find functions that are nearby. So there's a floating point one and a color one here. Uh, and basically this just, uh, oh, this is the get function here. Sorry, let's go ahead and do uh, render draw color. Let's find the setter function. So you can see there's a set and a get function, again, helpful. Uh, and we're basically just gonna set the values here. Uh, I'm gonna set them in hex uh, just cause that's kind of how I think about the, the colors sometimes, but you can put basically put these in a range from zero to 255 here, okay? So let's go ahead and set this. It probably makes sense to set it beforehand. Uh, and again, I'm not doing any air checking here uh, for better or for worse. Uh, let's go ahead and set this up here. Render. And the red background, I'm just gonna make that zero. Uh, let's add a little bit of green here and a lot of blue. And uh, we can also do the alpha value here uh, I'm just going to make it fully opaque here. Okay, but maybe if we want our window to be transparent or something, we can play around with that here. Okay, so we're going to set our color here, clear it, and then what's the last step we need to do? Well, we need to present our renderer here. Uh, so that's going to be the form render. That's sort of the namespace. Present. Okay, SDL render present. And this updates the screen with any rendering performed since the previous call. What was the stuff that we've updated? Well, we've done this SDL render clear. Okay, so SDL render uh, present, and this will be for our uh, specific render here. And here would be, you know, more drawing operations. Okay. So basically what we've done here now is we have a hardware accelerated window. It's doing basically the equivalent of this without drawing the actual surface here, which we're going to do uh, in the next video. Uh, but that's, that's the basic idea. So let's see if this works here. Let's see if this clears us to a greenish blue background screen. Looks like we have something nice here. Okay, so we have a nice light blue screen here that it's clearing, and again, it's running uh, nicely at 60 frames per second still. Okay, so just to make this a little bit more uh, interactive or fun as a challenge, what you can do here is change so that the rendering draw color uh, changes based off of some button press. Maybe you press the one key or the two key, and you set a different draw color here. 
Okay, so that could be just a little bit of fun here and you'll get a little bit of interaction in your application, which is a little bit more fun. Okay, so that's a little challenge for you moving forward. Now, before we move on to that, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of, uh, I'll leave the, those comments in actually, maybe we'll, they'll be useful. Uh, but I do wanna do a few, uh, run a few of the other SDL functions because these are things that might be important as you move towards building a full uh, game application where for instance, um, you want to be able to query the different renderer types here. So let's see what render we actually got here. Um, let's see, I think it'll be git render something. Let's see, git renderer name. Let's see what that function yields us here. I think this is gonna return the name of the selected renderer. So let's go ahead and do that here. Um, and let's do that if our initialization was successful. Let's say else. And let's do this full screen just so you can see. We will print out the renderer name. And I'm just going to do this in an SDL log function here uh, for our renderer. And renderer. Okay. And let's go ahead and make it a format string. And let's go ahead and do something, something like that here. Okay. So let's see if that works. Compiled. Uh, now I have a bunch of mouse events. Uh, unfortunately, so we got to scroll up here and see what our renderer was. Let's scroll, scroll, scroll. All right, here it is. So renderer, OpenGL. Okay, so simple as that here. Uh, it looks like it selected OpenGL. Now, I do have a pretty decent NVIDIA graphics card. Um, so I wonder if I had other options. I wonder if Vulkan was an option here. So two things I'm going to do here. Let's comment out some of the mouse move events here. So let's go into our input function. Uh, let's find that here and let's go ahead and uh, I think mouse motion is the one again just to give us a little bit of a recap here that's causing all these uh, outputs here SDL mouse down where is it here oh we're just logging the position constantly here okay so I'll just go ahead and comment that out here that'll make things a little bit easier to see there we go okay uh, and I still have my key presses and mouse clicks and so on Great, okay, but anyways, uh, let's go ahead and see what renderers were available here. So if I do create render, I think it had a link here um, to the, uh, I, we can call this SDL get render driver here. Um, and SDL, I think there's actually a little snippet here. We can actually just copy and paste here. And that'll show us uh, basically the number of render options we have. So I might expect to have OpenGL and Vulkan here. Um, and then we can actually print them out here. So let's actually see here uh, what we get here. And again, this could be a nice little debugging thing. These are the sort of nice touches that, again, come into the final parts of your game project because uh, you want to give the user some options or, again, for whatever reason, maybe a driver crashes if you've ever played a game <laughs> where that's happened. So let's go ahead and compile this and run it and see if we had other options. Looks like we actually had a couple options here. I mean, we've got the GPU uh, backend. Uh, Vulkan, we could have explicitly put in here, and OpenGL, OpenGL uh, ES here. Let's see if we actually put in Vulkan, uh, if it works here. So let's terminate our application here. Uh, and again, if I wanted to be very explicit, instead of null pointer, I would pass in that character string. It compiles, uh, and it runs. Okay, so now we're running a Vulkan window here. So again, really super, super cool stuff here. Uh, I'm gonna let it just choose the default. That's fine here. I think it's literally just choosing the first available hardware accelerated one. Maybe there's a priority for uh, choosing one that's the most backwards compatible or something. But again, if you think you're able to get better performance on one or the other, again, benchmark, that's why we're computing the frames per second. Uh, so you can do that as a second experiment once we add some more to our application. So anyways, folks, we have seen a few neat things here. Uh, just to recap this video, we now have a hardware accelerated window here. We are creating a renderer of our choice. We can query for other renderers, which is nice here. Um, we have uh, otherwise learned how to set the draw color, how to clear our screen and then update. And then in between here is where we're going to add more operations in the next video so that we can actually see some neat stuff. All right, folks, so as always, feel free to join the community here on courses.mshaw.io. we got a nice uh, little community forum here. You can join uh, and sign up. We've got a lot of members here, so feel free to engage in the discussion. I've got all those videos there. And otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode.